Hey guys, we're going to talk about maximal calibration for a minute. Um, the calibration component within Maximo originally came out as part of the life sciences add-on and it has found its way to be used in a lot of different areas but because of the way it came into the world of Maximo I think it's a little bit pigeonholed if you will it's stuck in this realm of only used in industries where we have customers calibrating a lot of their own components. If we look at what calibration is and how it works, I believe there, there are opportunities for calibration to be deployed outside of these areas where they have a lot of uh, assets requiring calibration. And here's why. So what is calibration? It's a job plan, okay? And it's going to take you through the steps just like any other job plan would. Now, what calibration does differently is calibration will get extremely detailed on how you're gonna carry out those steps and what you're going to use to carry out those steps. So a calibration standard, a tool that itself has been calibrated, how many times you may have to repeat the same task. So let's go to life sciences and we are making a pill, right? And there's a nozzle that injects uh, into a mix, a, a fixed amount of active ingredient. We wanna know that you have the right amount of active ingredient in this, right? Well, how do we know that? Well, we know that because a metrologist, a calibration expert, has calibrated that injection nozzle based upon the calibration data seat requirements that they were given. And then they have verified that it is within calibration and then they've put a sticker on it that says it was calibrated on this date by this person and that it passed. And that's traditionally what we see in calibration. But when we dig into that deeper and we say, well, wow, you know, I've got a lot of assets that I want to know are performing that way. Heck, I've got a lot of components on any, any engine that I would love to know is performing at that level of detail. Well, how do you know this? Well, in a calibration data sheet, Again, like a job plan, we have a set of steps. And then within there, we're telling someone to go measure something and we're telling them to use a calibrated, a verified standard, a tool that is accurate for the measurement of this. And then we're gonna tell them to measure it. Often, we're gonna see three measurements. It's measure it, okay, remove it, measure it again, remove it, measure it again, all right? And that's uh, allowing for you know margin of error, error in terms of uh, human capacity to do the exact same thing the exact same way three times in a row. Maybe I took measurements in a slightly different spot, so I'm making sure I have you know consistency in the item that I'm measuring and then we're going to see whether or not that's within tolerances and depending upon where it is you know let's say from a zero to ten just as an example um you know ideally i'm sitting at five well i'm at a one okay well i'm going to then adjust it until i get back to a five so i'm going to adjust and then i'm going to measure again and i'm recording all of this and explaining what i adjusted and that now i left it back at a five which is ideal uh, and that's very powerful data because then when i come back and i look that i'm calibrating this every 30 60 90 days whatever the interval is i'm going to start to see the drift and this is where calibration becomes very powerful and applicable across a whole slew of assets outside of just like the life sciences nuclear oil and gas type worlds i can see the drift I can see that on the, my first 30 days when this asset was new, it went from five to four. And then over time, it went from five to three, it went from five to one and a half, and I'm starting to see a trend, right? And that's where the power comes in with calibration because we can start to trend on that drift. So you wanna get predictive on the nuanced details of how your assets are operating, 
look at what calibration does, look at how those calibration data sheets work and start thinking about what assets that you have that need to be precise and may not fall under a traditional calibration program should be leveraging the capabilities of calibration and Maximo. Love to hear your thoughts on this and any ways you are using calibration that might be outside of the normal required calibration capabilities. Please drop your thoughts, comments below. Look forward to talking to you.